Welcome to Computer Tech TV and I am Rick Arter. Today's video is going to be a desktop memory buyer's guide and this is going to be specifically geared towards DDR3 memory since that is the current standard and it will be around for a few years to come. So if you're upgrading your computer and it uses DDR3 memory or you're planning on building a new computer using DDR3 memory and you're unsure which memory you should get, this is the video for you. When selecting desktop memory for your computer, there's a few criteria you should look at to select the correct kit for your application. First off is the capacity of the memory, the speed of the memory, the voltage that the memory operates at, the cast latency and timings of the memory, whether you need a multi-channel kit or a single stick, and should you buy memory with heat spreaders. Capacity is the amount of memory that you have. This is measured in gigabytes. Now this will be different if you're buying a single module or a kit, which is multiple modules. The most common capacity in DDR3 modules today is 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabytes, and 4 gigabytes. Now if you run a multi-channel kit, this obviously will be multiplied by the amount of modules that you are running in the kit. To determine how much memory you're going to need for your system, you need to figure out what the computer is going to be used for. If it's going to be a low-end budget computer that's only going to be used for internet, email, maybe a little bit of gaming, 2 gigabytes will be okay. For the mid-range, a gaming-only PC, or someone who's going to be using uh, multiple programs, uh, Photoshop, do some video editing, uh, or you just want to run quite a few different things at one time, you'd be looking at about 4 gigabytes of memory. Now, if you're a high-end enthusiast, or you are a hardcore gamer, or you just want to have enough memory to last yourself a while, you want to look at about 6 to 8 gigabytes plus. If your system is going to be running under 4 gigabytes of memory, a 32-bit operating system will be fine. If you're running over 4 gigabytes of memory, you're going to look into a 64-bit operating system to be able to access all of that memory. Speed or frequency is how fast the memory runs. Common speeds for DDR3 memory go anywhere from 800 megahertz up to 2133 megahertz and beyond. Typically for a low-end computer, speed isn't going to really matter too much, so a kit with 1066 or 1333 MHz speeds will be fine. For mid-range, you want to look into 1333 to 1600 MHz speeds. 1600 to 1866 is more for the high-end, as some motherboards do not support that high of speed. And a high-end enthusiast motherboard or a person who's into overclocking, you want to look into 1866 MHz up to the 2133. There are memory modules that operate at speeds higher than 2133 megahertz. However, some boards do not support those, and the ones that do more than likely will only support those with overclocking. Voltage is the amount of power that the module requires to run at the advertised speed and timings. The lower the voltage on the memory modules, the less heat that will be produced and the less power that will be consumed by the modules as they are running. Low voltage memory modules run anywhere from 1.25 to 1.35 volts. Most common memory kits you're going to see out there run from 1.5 to 1.65 volts. And memory that's running 1.65 volts or over is usually higher end or enthusiast memory. When it comes to the cast latency and timings of memory modules, there's two things you need to look at. The cast latency, which is the very first number, which is the most important, on performance on memory. This runs anywhere from 6 to 10, while 7 to 9 is the most common that you'll see. And the timings, which are the first four numbers that they list on the memory module, these are the most important and the ones that most people will have to worry about. These run anywhere from 6, 8, 6, 20, all the way up to 11, 11, 11, 30, depending on the voltage and frequency the memory runs at. When referring to timings on memory modules, the lower the number, the tighter the timing, the higher the number, the looser the time. Depending on the board, you might be looking into a multi-channel kit of memory. Multi-channel kit is basically a matched amount of memory modules that run at the same speed and the same timing to give you more performance. A dual channel kit, you're going to be running at least two matched modules. On a triple channel kit, you're going to be running at least three or six matched modules. And on the upcoming X79 platform, you'll be uh, looking at quad channel memory, which will be at least four match modules. If your motherboard only supports single channel memory, then it doesn't matter how many modules that you purchase. However, if your board does support multi-channels, then you want to buy the multi-channel kit that will correspond with your motherboard to get the most performance and highest bandwidth possible. For example, if your motherboard supports dual channel memory, 
you want to buy a kit that has either two modules or format modules in a match set. Having modules of different capacity will not affect the overall performance and bandwidth of the system. However, buying mixed kits with different timings and different speeds will affect the performance and the bandwidth of the overall setup. When mixing modules with different speeds and timings, motherboards usually will default the speed to the slowest sticks and the loosest timings. The memory in your computer develops heat just like any other component. Therefore, you want to have something to keep it cool. Memory is very sensitive to heat. Heat spreaders are basically heat sinks for your memory and they are added to keep the memory cool. Now most low-end and budget memory modules will not feature heat spreaders. However, you can add them aftermarket if you'd like. Higher end memory will come with heat spreaders and sometimes an optional fan that will keep the memory even cooler than the heat spreaders can do. For example, Corsair's Dominator memory not only comes with heat spreaders but it includes a fan that blows directly onto the memory modules to keep them cooler than heat spreaders could alone. Even if your memory did not come pre-installed with heat spreaders or a fan, if you have good case cooling or you have an extra fan that you'd like to put there next to your memory modules, that will help keep it cool and add to the longevity of the memory. I hope this basic guide helped anyone out there who was looking to upgrade or purchase new memory for their computer and wasn't sure what all the specifications meant. If you have any questions, please send me a personal message or leave a comment below this video and I will try my best to help you out. As always, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Don't forget to comment, rate this video, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.